This is actual electrical content training. Uh, this is a quick, dirty video. This will definitely end up on YouTube because I haven't seen another review for it in the video format, yeah? So this is specifically for the train I've done. Not necessarily Trinity Candy. Oh, I've been done my battery course. Stop, 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 stop. Let me just tell you one thing before we get going, yeah? Right? This is not an exam. This is not a course even on how to fit battery storage. And the solar one is not how to fit solar. You will not be getting any tools out. You will not be learning any of that kind of stuff. This is a theory and knowledge based exam for selecting and erecting, i.e. picking and knowing how to properly store to the regulations, this equipment and how it functions in words. It's a book based exam. It's basically the 18th edition exam but for batteries, there's no tools, there's no R2s, there's no talk about manufacturers. It's a straight, here's the legislation, here's how you reference it, and here's how you follow it. So don't go turn up with your toolbox or moaning at the course because there's no, no one's telling you how to do a thing. That's not how the industry works. Don't show you how to do stuff. That's what manufacturers do. So don't, I've seen bad reviews for this company and other companies because of that reason. So remember, that's not how training works. It's about legislation, referencing and books. Not showing you how to do something. This isn't a fucking Lego manual. Oh, I've been done my battery course. The LCL one, which is evergreen. Apparently the BPEC one, last five years, it's going to redo it. I ain't got time for that shit, yeah? I'm 40 fucking three. I'll be dead soon. Yeah, I ain't going back for no battery courses. That's what CPD's for. If they're going to keep making me do CPD, I want courses that are evergreen. So the LCL one is evergreen. So I chose that one. I My background is, I'm a bellend, but I'm looking to teach it. I'm going to be teaching this course at a Prince one to one because I'm their tutor. They've selected me from some of the most finest tutors going and selected me because I'm a bellend. Anyway, I went to the LCL course at Napier. I went to the LCL course at Napier in Mansfield. Right, so that's where I did it. They gave me, when I got to the, when I got there, there was a calculator on the table. This pad which has an excellent amount of pages, yeah? And a pen. Literally didn't have to take fuck all in there. They provided me a pen and some paper. Also provided a workbook. I'll come back to that shortly. Terminology and some stuff. And just, just like tweaked up their workbook. So yeah, that was good. Let me just sort this out. So this isn't a clusterfuck and I'll show you some more. They also provided a printout of MGD003, the MCS solar PV self-consumption calculation thing. And then they provide them with the sheets to do a couple of self consumptions, which I didn't find that difficult. Obviously, some, some software will do them, but to be honest, you could do them freehand quite easily and you could learn, you know, learn new skills like math. So that old package is there. They provide that because you have to do one. So it's not like they're giving it for free. You have to do it as part of the course. Like I say, there was some uh, terminology bits, a bit on parasitic capacitance and some bits and bobs to go with the work, but they, co they complement the work and just... Oh uh, yeah, so I'm guessing they've had some problems with the questions on them and they've adapted that by producing a little bit more detail for them. So that's nice. They're responsive to the problems they get. They gave me a copy of Pass 63100, which is great because I'll just print that out. Well, I don't just print that out. They me, I'll put that in a workbook. I'll put that in a folder um, because BSR make you sign in for it, don't they? Because they're twats. So that's good. I needed my regs in the, book, in the exam. Definitions, symbols, easy to find. Top tip for you. Top me on site guiding. I had to purchase my own copy of the guidance note. Grid connected solar photo about systems. Second edition I'm on. Oh, no, that's the wrong fucking one. <laughs> right, I'll edit it out later. I, I knew it was wrong when I read it was, when it was version two. Third edition of electrical energy storage systems. I provided that myself. I bought that in advance. I'll go over that in a second. And I got their work, but yeah. Now, a lot of people say to me when I do courses, oh, I wish I'd got this in advance so I could read it. I got this months ago. Months ago. And during one of the exams that I was teaching one of my courses, I tabbed it up, all the annexes, all the chapters, yeah? And then what I did was, I fucking never went anywhere near it again. Because the problem is we're getting these early thinking you'll read them is, they're not very easy to read. Code of practice are incredibly bad laid out. Don't read like a book and boring. They're also, on the flip side of that, really fucking hard to reference. They're written like dog shit. They're not written like the reg. So I never touched it again. I had a flu flicks through it. Read the page, had read the pictures, but I just couldn't get into it because I didn't know what the fuck any of it meant. Anyhow, having it tabbed up was an absolute time saving the exam because I weren't there very long. So having it tabbed up is always worth it. Always tabbing your books. I've got a video on tabbing your books if you want to know about that on my YouTube. Actual course wise, yeah, like I said, they gave me the pen, the paper, and the box. What I quite, I won't get this away because it's obviously copyright, but I'll show you a few pictures, yeah. 
Nappet LCL award, level three award. What Nappet do that I quite like is some places where I work, they have workbooks and they have slides. Nappet combine those, so your workbook is the slides. So it's literally just a print out of slides log, which some people might consider lazy. But I've found this to be an excellent way of doing it. So there you go, example. That is what I saw on the slide on the course, and that is what is in my book. Everything I saw on the course, I have a copy of, which is really nice, because I can nick it. No, not really. I, I wasn't trying to compare my notebook with the slides. I just find this a lot better. Also, it takes away the need for me to go, oh, i just take a photo of that slide. That's a really good slide. Very well descriptive, because it's here. So I, I do like that, and the work was pretty good. As for the course itself, it is two days. The first day, you do a bit of admin and you spend your day going through this book and comparing it against the chapter in your Energy Storage Systems 3rd Edition. The second day, we did a little bit more of this that we hadn't quite got done. And then we finished, it gave us a mock exam, which was provided. This one, which could take home that night. They gave us 50 questions to take home that night and have a go at. We not quite worked through the workbooks, but that was probably because we were all trying to chit chat stuff. Mark exam was quite good, realistic interpretation of what was going to happen. Felt comfortable fumbling my way through the book trying to find those questions. Um, I felt that this, these slides really helped me mark up my book, my code of practice properly. So that was well good, well good. From the point of view of someone that does training, I felt the course was very well structured, very well delivered. The, the toot was really good, came across really well ex-person who's had his own firms and that, which I always like to hear. Some geezer's had his own firms, done this, done that, done that, done that, done everything, then rocked up to do some training. That's my preferred type of tutor. Like I say, the slides pack, the slides, the slide pack, and this all went together quite well, which is nice. It wasn't disjointed anyway. It's two days, right? There is no time for nantering or, nant nattering or bantering. It's pretty quick. Get there, go through the book, so read the stuff. There's a lot to take in, there's a lot of classes. One of the things I would have done if I'd gone, if I'd known in the future, and I suppose this should go for any courses, there was a lot of abbreviations. Not that it took long to learn them, but I wish I'd learned them before. Um, I will show you those. Abbreviations aren't copyrighted, but they're backwards on Instagram. Yeah, just learn them quickly. I, it weren't like I couldn't work them out, it's just it delayed me by seconds, I had to do some more thinking. Uh, and I've gone through the definitions more. Again, this is very badly laid out, I think, as a code of practice. I think it's like we lobbed together by a bunch of trained monkeys. So first day, you had to go through the box. Second day, we went through the mock exam. There weren't time to discuss the questions What You just had to go, you got that right, you got that wrong. Quick level up where you've gone wrong. Then you do a bit of practical. I think it's like a, there's a, what do you call it, example. You do a self-consumption little thing to work it out. It's actually quite useful. You do safe isolation a bit. RSD testing. They had a good rig. They had a really, really good rig that you could look at and it all operated. Had a real battery and everything. That was really good. The one disappointing thing about the course was it's too quick. That's all. The only, the only bad thing I can say about it is what, bad points about Napit Training Mansfield, yeah, it's in an old mill and it is in the middle of nowhere, literally. Like it would survive a nuclear blast. There's a cob van there. If you go, make sure you have a nice breakfast and maybe take a sandwich with you. Although they look, provide loads of biscuits and free and coffee, coffee, tea, coffee and all that, yeah. There is no way, to, you are not going anywhere to get your food at lunchtime. It is not happening. So make sure you take that with you. It's, it was quite cool of a building. I think it was roasted then. It weren't hot. So it was nice. The classrooms are nice. It's all nice like that. Plenty of parking. Quite secure as well in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, so bad things about napping training. It's fucking miles from anywhere. Take your own food. That, that rules out that one, so it's not bad. The bad thing about the course is it is too quick. Yeah? The lecturer's going for it. He knows his He knew his pace. He knew exactly where he wanted to be every day, yeah? And he was pushing people. When people were talking, he was just getting in there and getting it moving on. Very, very good control of the class, I thought. Um, there's just too much. There's no time for nattering. There's clearly a lot of people. There's a small groups where I need six in my group, although I think you could easily do that to 12. But they seem to be in sixes. There was just not, there was a lot of people in the group that clearly knew a lot and had done a lot and had been on jobs and there was no time to talk about it. And sometimes some of the most interesting things you get are when you talk to each other. With it being two days, there's not much time. You come home that night, you do the mock exam. I would have liked to have another night in a book to have learned the abbreviations and some other bits and bobs. But I'm afraid the simple fact is, the simple fact is NAPIT operate in a commercial space. We're there to sell courses. So 
if you take all the costs of putting someone in a train centre and the tutor, I don't know, £400 each, or whatever, just a made-up number, yeah, and then you times it by the amount of students in the course, then if you had an extra day, you will increase the cost of the course by 33%, or is it 50 Anyway, you'll increase it proportionally by the extra day of the course. If they did the three-day one that people come away from felt absolute reward in that, they'd probably get about 10 people a year doing it. That's the true I'm trained to it, so we can do that apprentice one to one. If they sell a course where it's two days, most employers will go, that two day one will do you. We get less time when you're not at work. And that's so actual nape it wise, couldn't knock it whatsoever, really, really good. But the actual course really should be a three day course. Uh, a bit more fun interaction in it. It was literally like bang, 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 get it down, yeah. But I did learn quite a bit, if I'm honest. This is all batteries. I mean, my experience in batteries goes from I fit my own 10 megawatt battery outside. I fitted my own 10 kilowatts battery outside that came packaged in just a box that I screwed to the wall and fit it like a radio off I went. And I used to have an 80 gigabyte, <laughs> an 80 megawatt battery farm in Flitic, which is fucking huge. I'll put a picture of this on YouTube. So that's my experience. It's like one extreme to the other, nothing in between. But with this, you'd, I wouldn't say like I'm a fucking genius now, but I understand the concept of all the different classes of system, how you can assemble them out of different components, where they form the classification, how they're to be designed and dealt with. You know, I enjoyed it. I thought the content was all good because it was delivered so well. I understand a bit more about earthing systems and things like that. I don't understand the G99, the 98, the 100. I need to sit down and revise them. That is where I got question on the exam, which I'll come to in a second. But yeah, content-wise, it was good. Time is not enough. Could do with being three days, so you got more to take it in. That's really that is that. Exam-wise, one hour, 30 minutes. 32 questions. Pass mark is 75. For all you fucking boffins out there, you want to know, yeah? I got... I got 87%. Because I had two options, yeah? Because I'm a trainer learning to train. I, di I didn't... I don't... I, it was hot. The computer... One thing, nap it. Your computer screens are a bit small. I was fucking struggling. They got the cheapest laptops come for the exams. Computer screens were a bit small for me, but I am 43. I got 87%. The options were fucking smash it, get out there and look like Billy Big Balls because I'm out there first whilst everyone gasps at me as I leave and I've already finished, which is the option I went for. Or if I'd sat there and reread the questions again, I probably could have got over 95. But I couldn't be asked to want to get over and see my dog because he's here watching me now. So yeah, uh, nap it. Would I recommend? Yes, I would. It was all right location. It was all right parking. It was all right room. Take your own food, tea, coffee, provided. Lecture is good. Exam was good. Got my results. Bosh, bosh, bosh. Would recommend. Would actually recommend. Yeah, got my recommended seal of approval. Uh, the only other place to train at. I, I, they don't do it, so I can't recommend you go there and see me. Um, but beware. Which course do? Um, yeah, like I said, the only negative points that I come up with were basically that the course is too long. The course is too short. But that's why I'm doing it, so we can train apprentice one-to-one -one and do it for longer. Take more over it. But that's not commercially acceptable, so yeah. Recommend them. Decent crew. There you go. If anyone wants to ask me anything about that specific course that I can answer, not a real secret to you or the questions or all that, I'll take questions just message me. Yeah, I'll put a box here, hang on, because then I can answer them, and this will make a, maybe some sort of coherent video. But yeah, no one else put a review of it. Oh, that was the other thing. That was the other thing. I originally booked on the three-day solar followed by the two-day battery. Having just done that now and knowing that that course content was really good, there was a lot in there to enjoy and take in that was new. But apparently, allegedly, I haven't been on it yet, the solar course is full of old shit that you do with software nowadays. I feel if I'd been on the solar course, this is a few weeks later because that footage got off, yeah? I feel if I'd done the solar course on the Monday to the Wednesday... And then the battery across the back end. It's a bit too much, even for me. And I like this shit. If you are a Sparky, who's a working Sparky, that five days is probably a long time for you. If you want to grizz it out, be my guest. But even I was like, Jesus, I'm glad I didn't do that three days first. So yeah, if you do the three days solar course, the two day battery one, just watch out. There's a lot of people as well. There's a few people on Long Avenue is offering that those two courses in four days. That would be an absolute grizz. I certainly would not want to do it in less than five days. Two for the battery, three for the solar. Anyone that's offering it for is probably a shyster. Just remember, 
Fitting domestic batteries is easy. You literally screw it to the wall and make a radio for it. Yeah, but this course does delve into the other options you can do, like, aren't they? Like, you know, the stuff that you more construct from different bits, like the um, the blue stuff, I'll put it here. And it basically covers up to battery farms because it's doing the broad outline of everything. So, yeah, it's a good course. But if you just fit domestic systems, there'll be loads of stuff that you don't need. Because I came at it from a, I'm just interested in battery systems from little ones to fucking ginormous ones. I felt like I got more out of it. So don't get sucked into that. If you're fitting lots of batteries at home, they are easy, but this is covering a little bit more. So yeah, hope that's been useful to you. If you ain't going on a battery course, you don't want to, this video has been fucking useless, but I'll see you next time on Actual Electrical Fucking Mop, you fucking prick. Don't forget to fucking, I don't know, like and subscribe to someone else's channel because I can give a fuck.